that particular moment that I sat down, people, take note of this moment. As, as I sat down at that back seat, I was so humiliated. Like I wanted the ground to open so I could enter, you know. I sat down and the Nepa took the light. Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Soma. And to all of you that keep coming back, hello and welcome back. Quick reminder if you've never subscribed, just to remind you to click that red button there that says subscribe. And after that, click the bell sign. That way you get a notification whenever I upload the new video. Yeah. So today's video, I'm going to be sharing about how I ended up in a bachelor's house. Okay, long story short. Some of you may have watched the video where I talked about how I became born again. I have another video how I was kicked out of home. I had another video about how I was um, arrested by my dad. I have another video about being engaged to a pastor. You know, the church I was going to then, the pastor told me that God said I was his wife. Well, that never happened. And I have another video as well about that. So people have asked me what happened after I left home. So this video will kind of give a bit more information about what happened after I left home. But I think i would also make another video to share more about my life after i left home but in today's video i want to zero in on how i ended up in a badger's house um something else i have to say is if you've watched a lot of my videos you know you would know that there's always going to be a god thing or about my fate or some you know something in relation to my fate in a lot of my videos i have been a girl of faith basically all my life you know i started off as a catholic girl grew up you know in a catholic home somehow i've always been someone that took the christ it took christianity seriously and even as a kid i was like that girl that was you know dedicated like i i like i knew my rosary i did my uh, communion my confirmation prayers i knew the mass off by heart and my catholic hymns and stuff like you know, that so always expect there to be a god thing or something about god in a lot of my videos because i'm a girl of faith because there are some people like oh they don't want to hear about the god god thing like some people like oh they don't want to me to talk about the god thing or stuff like that this the truth is this if my biography is going to be written it will be incomplete with without my faith you know uh, the story about my faith and stuff like that because it's been part of my life basically all my life so i have to make that clear this God knows good. Even when I shared my story about how I went to how I went to college or how I came to Europe and everything, you would always hear me say something about God here and there. How I became born again. I was I just finished secondary school. I was in the bus and I was going somewhere. Bus as in the public transport. And um, the guy sitting by my side um, invited me over to a church. Preached to me. Preached to me and invited me over to a church. And I went. I attended this church. I'm trying to talk fast. I'm sorry. So if you don't like when I talk too fast, um, and he invited me over to to the church and I went and um i went the first time and i i liked what i saw and i kept on going and before i knew it i became part of that family i became born again i started bible college because i wanted to you know when i became pentecostal born again christian and um, there was so much i there was so much about the born again life and the pentecostal you know doctrine and stuff like that that i didn't know and that was why i went to bible college because i wanted to know a lot of these things and um i'm going to share a different story about my time in bible college and i actually graduated some people have said oh that i actually graduated from a bible you know college. even as a kid in the catholic church i was told that the priest is god representative on earth and I remember as a kid after mass after mass we used to you know, we, we used to line up and wait for the priest to walk by and we'll be like father bless me father bless me and then he would kind of do this he would kind of do this on you or sometimes he sprinkle of the water or sometimes we just want to touch his clothes because you know i was told that touching his clothes is like touching the clothes of jesus so it meant so much to me i worshiped i worshiped priests and then i came with that to the to the pentecostal church i felt like pastors were perfect they can't go wrong you know um i, I like i never I, to be honest i didn't know they were like us but I, after a while I, I have to say i found out that they ended up finding out that they are humans like us you know they can sing they can be tempted and even the you know the when i said the best part was pastors like i mean the pastors with the best intentions can fall for temptations just like we can fall for temptations too and anyways this pastor guy long story short i've talked about it before he wanted us to do things that a couple should be doing and i said no and he was like we're already engaged we're gonna be married so it doesn't matter but thank god that my faith was strong and i refused to go that far with him long story short the engagement or whatever it never happened we never got married but i kept on going to the same church because that's the church i started off um attending and you know i was a young girl i was a teenager at this time i was 18 19 I kept on going to the same church because this is where i 
became born again this is like a family to me you know it's like my my you know in my, my believers gathering i was part of the choir you know everything and when he decided when the whole thing went here war he war and um he just was not nice to me anymore at all you know i kind of tried to mind my business still come to church as normal but he was making life hell for me like he was really frustrating me i remember one day he sent somebody to come and call me over to his office and we were there with the quite doing the choir practice and they called me over to his office i went to his office and he said to me um i don't want you coming to this branch anymore you know i, I don't want to be seeing you and i said well like what i haven't done anything to you so i just felt like I shouldn't stop coming to church because of that he was like yeah a new branch has opened you know near your hostel because then i was living in the hostel i was living in the hostel of the bible college and he said a new branch has opened in in uh, near you you don't have to come to this branch anymore i don't want to see you here and i that was what i did i was i was really upset because you know i had nobody at this point i you know i i was i was kicked away from home you know i lived in the hostel where most of them were grown men and women married men and women were the ones in bible college so the, the choir was the only place that i could meet people of my age you know my age mates it was the spiritual environment but at the same time that was the only place that i socialized and cutting me off from that was really it was really hard for me it was hard for me so i stopped going to that church i started going to the other branch that was near to me you know kept on going to this branch and one time there was this thing going on i think it was like you know the convention or whatever so the two choirs were to be merged together so we're having a combined choir practice and then the branch where he he was was merged and they were coming over to the branch where i was now attending to practice for this convention or whatever i can't remember what it was and the funny thing is when i was his woman you know he was the one that one day during choir practice walked up and put me in the front seat because he liked to see me at the front seat so um something else i have to say i'm not making this video to put him down or whatever this is 23 years ago you know i do uh, it's, it's possible he has repented of what he did it's a long time ago like it's the past but but i still can't share the story without sharing exactly what happened and then they came to this branch and the choir choir was met together and one day during the choir practice he came from nowhere he just said um i'm gonna rearrange the choir i'm gonna change the sitting arrangement and i knew boom 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 i was like this is about me i just knew and the next thing he said was um you go to the back me he sent me to the back seat and the choir guests knew when we were engaged people knew we were engaged he sent driver to drive me everywhere he dropped me off places picked me up places and now people knew there was something wrong and we were all young girls teenagers you know as soon as he sent me to the back seat, you could hear the, you know, the kind of, you know, everybody was like, you know, that kind of don 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 kind of moment. And then I, I just stood up and I went to the back seat. As soon as I sat down, take note of this, guys. At that particular moment that I sat down, people, take note of this moment. As, as I sat down at that back seat, I was so humiliated. Like, I wanted the ground to open so I could enter, you know. I sat down and the Nepa took the light. In Nigeria, if you say Nepa took the light, it means the electricity went off. You know, electricity went off. And I said to myself, this is it. I'm out of here. And I, I, I wanted to get out of there because I wanted to get out before the electricity comes back on. And I snuck out of that choir practice. I left the church and I just left. I was walking home. I was just so upset. You know, I was like 18, 19, you know. I was so, I was so upset. Like... I had no family, I had nobody, like the church was my whole family, basically, but this was happening to me in church, I was miserable, I was walking home, and then this car stopped, this car stopped by my side and said, what is a fine girl like you doing walking, I'll give you a lift, and I got in the car, I couldn't tell this guy what I was going through, but I was just there, and I was just, I was just fed up with my life. I was fed up with my life. I felt like I've given up everything for this, my faith in God, and, you know, this my newfound belief, my, you know, I, you know, I felt like I've given up everything, my family, everything, and I just feel like nothing was working. This guy gave me a lift. I didn't say much, you know, but he was a nice guy. He was, he was very, he was very friendly and chatty and everything. And then he dropped me and he said, where are you going? I told him and he said, I'll take you there. And I said, okay, fine. He dropped me and then I used, to, and that day, you know, I was going over to a friend's house. This is a, a fellow student in the Bible college, but she's a married woman and she knew everything I was going through. So that day I was going to her house. I used to spend time at her house sometimes, you know, and he got to a point, you know, those of you that know Nigeria, 
I don't know how it is now, but this is ages ago. There was a massive pothole and the road was so bad that even buses used to drop people off at the beginning of the pothole. People used to walk the rest of the distance. And this guy got to the point and I said, drop me off here. I can walk the, the rest. I said, the road is bad. He was like, no, 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 no. I'll drop you off. As he was driving through the, he was driving through the thing. He started singing, roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. I turned and I... I turned, I looked at him, and I just started laughing. Oh, that's a nursery rhyme. I wasn't expecting him to sing that. And I just started laughing. And that kind of brightened my mood. And he dropped me off. And he, I didn't let him drop me exactly in front of my friend's house. He kind of, I dropped off like a few houses away. And he said to me, I don't live in Benin. I only came to visit. And he said, this is my card. If you ever come to Lagos, come and say hello. And I said, fine. I said, thanks. And, and that was it. I said I went to my friends and I told my friend she was like oh that was very nice of him and all of that so that was the end of that long story short I had a miserable life you know I became very sick I ended up having you know appendicitis I, and then I became unwell I ended up going to the village where my mother lived I got my appendix removed and all of that done I stayed until I was healed I stayed with my mother at least with my mother there was always food my mother wasn't rich or anything but there was always always food so I, I had food to eat I went to the farm with my mother I loved farming you know i've said it before i've made a video where i talked about i do a lot of gardening so i enjoy space staying in the village but the problem is when my village is a very remote village there was no life for me in the village i come from a village where you hardly find young people in the village it's always only old people that you find in the village I, I needed to go back to the city because i needed to do something with my life i went back to benin you know and then i started um living with a friend so i was living with this friend but i was struggling when i left the village i came with a lot of farm produce i brought gary you know a lot of food stuff but that lasted me a while but after a while you know i had no qualification i had nothing so but after a while my, my struggle was so bad this why i want to say this part is this if you're a christian and you see another christian suffering help them help them because sometimes they you know you can get to a point where you just lose faith because I lost faith. I felt like the Bible said if I do this, if I follow God with all my heart and I do what the Bible says, I will have, God will see me through. But I was like, why should I live in poverty? Why should I live without food? Like the worst thing that can happen to you is not to have food to eat. It's one of the worst things that can happen to you. I had no food, I had no money. You know, I went through all this poverty. After a point, I just said to myself, this born again thing is not working. It's not working. This is not what the Bible said. You know, this is why help you help your fellow Christian because people can backslide. It got to a point I said, it's not working. This is not what the Bible said. This thing the Bible said is not true because if it's true, why would God let me suffer like this? And I just felt like, no, I'm not doing this born again thing anymore. And that was how I quit. I just felt like, no, that's it. I just, long story short, one day I stumbled on this card that guy gave me, you know, a while back. And I was like, what about if I went to Lagos to see this guy? And I decided to go look for him. To my shock, I got there and front and back and everywhere there were, you know, they were everywhere there were army and police and all of this. I was like, why? I was kind of confused. The Okada guy dropped me off and I went to one of the military guys and I said, you know, I'm looking for this guy. And he said, oh, he's not around. He took me, they opened the door for me. They let me in. I was confused. What is this? Got inside and everybody was so super nice. And then they said, they're going to, they're going to ring him to come. You know, they're going to ring him to let him know what's my name, blah, blah, blah. I told him they're going to ring him. Long story short, he came back and um he was shocked he was like i thought i'd never see you i thought you'd never come and he was you know and and i said to him what is going on what is all of this what is all of this he told me he said this is ibrahim abacha's house for those of you that do not know ibrahim abacha was the son of the former president of nigeria and he said this is ibrahim abacha's house and he said he's my friend and we all live here if you know a lot of houses friends always live together it's part of their culture they live together they eat together I was in shock i was in shock like i i didn't know just by meeting him he never told me when i met him in benin anything like that you know but that was how i ended up in this house and it happens to be ibrahim abacha's house and i'm going to be honest and say my life changed there is so much story about my life my life changed i was no longer poor all of a sudden i had a different life 
completely different life you know i'm gonna do another video where i will tell the whole story about my relationship with this guy he's an awesome man when i met him in Benin, at first glance i didn't even know he was an awesome man he didn't look hausa you know the way we're used to them dressed with kaftan he had no kaftan on he was that kind he was very educated he didn't even have the accent I remember i said take note of when the electricity when that when that pastor made me when that pastor told me to go sit at the back and the electricity and the electricity went off and i left if that pastor didn't frustrate me out of the church and i didn't walk away i wouldn't have met this guy and i will tell you guys how meeting that guy led to something else that led to something else that led to where i am today I'm going to be honest and say there's been times when I've backslided in my life. I won't be the only one. A lot of us have had times when we did backslide at one point or the other in our lives. A lot of things can make people backslide. What you have to realize is you can't question God. Sometimes things happen for a reason. I believe it happened for a reason, you know, because that led to different things. I can tell you that I've never been, I can tell you that I have been born again since I was 17. And I can tell you there's been times when I did backslide. The thing I have come to realize is that if God has put his name on you, no matter where you go like the prodigal son you would always come back you will always come back so i wanted to share this want to tell you if you know a christian that is going through poverty help them you don't know where it can lead them i am so thankful to god that mine never led me completely astray but my my suffering have led me through different paths in life thank god that god kept on protecting me and leading me to the direction he wants my life to go but not everybody was that blessed i'm gonna say not everybody was, was that blessed i feel like of all the suffering in the world i can never justify a child of god going without food i can't i just can't understand that that is why the bible talks so much about helping the poor helping the poor helping the poor because there is so much that can happen to you when you are poor and wretched that is why western society they have welfare system where if you lose your job they don't give you a lot of money but they give you something to keep you just going because desperate things can happen when people are so poor to the point they can't eat and they can't even have food to eat but like i said i just wanted to give you guys this part of it two things i want you to take away from this is this you never know where god is leading you so many things can happen in your life only god knows where he's leading you think about the night that pastor frustrated me out of church but he didn't know that even though he was frustrating me he was pushing me to my destiny that's one secondly please never leave a child of god in poverty to the point where they have no food to eat and that's why when i talk about pastors and not helping the poor i am passionate about it from personal experience from personal experience i don't hate any pastor no i just hate poverty I hate, I can't describe how much I hate poverty. I hate poverty with passion. I hate what some pastors do. It doesn't mean I hate the pastors. No child of God should stay hungry. I will share more about this story and I will share how God has led me through so many ups and downs. Uh, you know, there's been times when I be like, God, I'm done. This relationship is over. No, you're not working. Bye. There's been times. I buy, I'm not doing this anymore. And I walk away from God. Yeah, the story is very long, but I don't want it to be too long. But I thought I should start off by saying how I got frustrated out of a church by a pastor. That I had that frustration out of church led me and landed me in Ibrahim Abacha's house. I said, I just, like I said, I'm going to share the rest of the story, but it's way too long for this one video. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at this and I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. It's goodbye, friends.